Okie dokes. And I'd like you to rest your hands in your lap, wherever is comfortable for you. And you could take a mudra if you wish to. Most commonly practiced is thumb and index finger together, palms facing up or down, or one of each is quite nice, okay? We place the palms facing up if we're feeling generous or we want to be open to receiving. Palms facing down if we were looking to conserve or contain our energy. So do what feels most natural for you. Close your eyes, please. And just settle into your seat. So allow your sit bones to nestle against whatever it is that you are comfortably sitting upon. And think about the natural curves of your spine retaining their buoyancy. Okay, there's no rigidity here. There's no stiff, straight column of your spine. You need to lose that idea. And think about your curve, the, the spine being in this lovely undulating curve all of the way up as, you, as, as it weaves its way up the back of your body. And every time you take a breath, the spine changes its length slightly because the curves, the shape of the curves changes. It's actually, in fact, very hard to put actual length into the spine. All we do is we change the, the intensity of the curves and therefore we look either shorter or longer, we appear that way. But the actual spine itself doesn't change length. Take a breath deep down into your belly. And maybe you'll notice that the lower back loses some of its curve. And as you exhale, the curve returns. Now breathe into the upper part of your back, the thoracic spine that runs from the bottom of the neck down past the rib cage. And as you inflate this area, the spine, the curve becomes bigger. And perceivably, it would look as though your spine is shortening. And as you exhale, the spine, the curve gets a little bit flatter. So see if you can maintain that awareness. It might feel counterintuitive to put that shape into your body as you breathe in. But if you cast your mind back a few sessions ago, if you were here with me, we talked about how there is quite a lot of lung tissue on the back of your body. In fact, there is more lung tissue on the back than there is on the front. So the more we can be aware of breathing into the back of our body, the more efficient our breathing will become. We're working with the body. And then to begin our practice this morning, we're going to take some right nostril breathing. The right nostril relates to the yang side of our energy, the more invigorating, more upright, more freely moving. And it also relates to the sun. It's very nice for building our energy before our practice in the morning. So I'd like you to choose a hand, I don't mind which one, and you could rest some fingers on your forehead and just use a thumb to lightly close the left nostril. It doesn't matter what hand you use, but lightly, don't press too hard, close the, the left nostril and you're going to take 10 breaths in exactly the same way that you have been, in and out, 
through just the right nostril. And this is to activate this energy within our body and to invigorate ourselves for our practice. So I'm going to do it with you. But do count your own breath. For me, I make that roughly halfway through. So if you weren't counting, take another five breaths here. And then you can release your hands into your lap and keep your eyes closed maybe for a little bit longer. Return the breathing to normal. Noticing any changes as they may have occurred. And then, without disturbing yourself too much, I'd like you to make your way down into a wide knee forward fold. So I'd like your knees, if they are able to, to be as wide apart as your mat is. If you have the flexibility and want to take the knees wider, by all means turn yourself round to one side so that you can keep your knees on your mat more comfortably. I've got my big toes together, I'm sitting on my heels. If that's uncomfortable or difficult, then put a block or a blanket between the sit bones and the heel. You're then gonna bow forwards and stretch the arms out gently and let the head come down towards the mat. If it doesn't reach the floor with ease, then please put something like a blanket or a block underneath your forehead. Give yourself permission to rest forwards. Although this will be brief, it is still nice to get into the habit of surrendering. Every time you get the opportunity to, you're a little bit closer towards the floor. You can let your body weight drop into your mat. Okay. And again, breathe into the back of your body. Every exhalation that you take, allow the, the, the hips, the sit bones, the thighs to become a little bit heavier. All right, so we're going to begin to move with our breath now. On an inhalation, I'd like you to float your way gently up to an all fours position. Maybe move the knees just slightly closer. We're going to come back to more wide legged stuff in a minute. As you exhale, gently drop your bottom backwards down towards your heels. Allow the head to fold down with you. Inhale, power up from the thighs. So use the strength of the thighs to lift you up to your all fours position and then exhaling to come down. Pad out the knees if you need to here. So double up your mat or use a blanket or something under your knees if you need to. So we're just gently moving with the breath. Nothing too strong, nothing too strenuous and going with the natural flow of your breath. This is your practice and your breath will be the one to govern how fast or how slowly you move or what intensity you'd like to work with this morning. 
Okay, so then as you come back up to all fours, I'd like us to pause here, please. And we'll take some circles with the hips. So think about moving the body out to the sides of the mat and round. And as the circles get bigger, you can get closer towards the floor, really coming out to the sides if you want to. So making a shape, any shape really, that works for you. It doesn't have to be a particular format, but just think about your body starting to unwind. Some of the, the tightness may be in the waist or the edges of the hips. Okay, pause when your neck's back in the center and go for some circles the other way. And then let's slowly come back to the center. Maybe sit back onto your heels or uh, into a kneeling or seated position. Get the heel of the hands together and roll the wrists in circles if that feels comfortable for you to do so. Okay, change direction, go back the other way. And I know I'm not facing you, but I'm just facing towards the top of my mat as probably you are too. So take one hand to the floor next to you, please. Take the other arm up and lean yourself over into a side bend. Lovely. Come back up to the center, release that hand down to the floor. Take the other arm up and over as you reach into a side bend this way. Come back to the center again, good. Roll the shoulders backwards a few times. Just make sure there is a sense of openness and mobility there. And then do some shoulder circles forwards, please. Good, and then let's come to the center. You can rest your hands on your lap. You can change your seated position if you need to. I want you to drop your chin towards your chest, please. And then lift your nose up towards the ceiling. Let's do this as we breathe in. And as we breathe out, drop the chin towards the chest. Breathe in, lift the nose up high. And then come back to center as you breathe out. Gently as you breathe in, turn to look over one shoulder. Inhale back to the center. And exhale, turn to look over the other shoulder. And inhale back to the center. Now this time, drop the ear towards one shoulder. Inhale back to center. And exhale the ear over to the other shoulder. I know I've got the breathing around in there somewhere. Sorry if that's confused you. Come back to the center. Okay, now from here, I'd like you to Lift your chest up nice and high. You're putting a bit of a curve in your lower back. Bring your hands behind your back if you can and link the fingers or just hold the wrists or the opposite forearm. Keep lifting the chest up high, but drop the chin towards the chest and then maybe take the hands away from the back of the body slightly. Don't force this movement, but just see if you can hold this here. Keep lifting up the chest dropping the chin closer towards it too. That's your priority as you just open some space in the front of the rib cage. Breathe in and breathe out. Now gently breathe in again and as you breathe out, keep the hands behind you but fold forwards towards the ground. Allowing the head to come down to the floor. If you need a block underneath your head, go for it. You can stay here if you want to. You can just breathe in and out with the hands behind your body. Or if you want to come with me, we're going to use some tummy muscles now. So I'd like you to inhale and maybe roll onto the top of your head, lifting your hips away from your heels. Exhale, let the front, let the hips sink down and you roll back onto the forehead again. We're going to do this twice more. So inhaling, 
rolling lightly onto the top of the head. Engage the tummy muscles so you can keep lifting the hips and don't let them collapse. Exhale to roll back down. Good, one more time. Inhaling, rolling up. Lift the hands a bit higher, draw the tummy in. Exhale, come down. Inhale, come up to sit. So come up to your kneeling position again. Good. And release the arms. Give them a bit of a shake. Give the wrists a bit of a release. Good. Okay, so just sit for a moment. We're not often used to putting weight onto the top of our head. So for some of us, it can feel a little bit, uh, can make you feel a little bit lightheaded, perhaps or a little bit uncertain of things. Anytime when we take our, ourselves upside down, that, that changes our, our awareness of ourselves. Okay, so let's come back onto all fours now, please. Tucking under your toes. Let's lift the knees and just hover the feet, no, sorry, the knees off of the floor, just an inch or two. Draw your navel quite strongly in towards your spine. Point your tailbone to the wall behind you. Feel the tops, uh, feel the soles of the feet getting a bit of a stretch here and feel your quadriceps starting to work. Okay, keep breathing in and out. Good. And then slowly let's lift the sitting bones up and back and pressing the palms into the floor. Have a little pedal now with the heels as you just maybe wave your sitting bone from side to side like a, like a dog happily wagging its tail. And just think about breathing into the sides of your body and so that the, length, the arms can lengthen and the sides of the waist can open. Good, okay. So let's inhale now, come back to center. Inhale, take your right foot up towards the ceiling behind you. Lovely. As you exhale, float your shoulders over your wrists and bring your right knee to your right elbow. We've done this a lot recently, so it's familiar. Breathe in and take your right foot back high up into the sky. Press the left heel down. See if you can get some real space between the two. Inhale, exhale, sorry, and knee to elbow again. So exactly the same thing. Curl the tummy up. See if you can round the back body. Then inhale, take the foot back. Press the heel to the ground. Exhale, shoulders over the wrist. This is your last one. Good. Now keep this here and see if you can place your right foot to the outside of your right hand. If it doesn't quite get there, give it a bit of a helping hand. It's absolutely fine. Pop your left knee down onto the floor and I've come straight off of my wrist. So I'm on my knuckles straight away. I'm on my fingertips because it's just too heavy to have your hands on the floor for all of that amount of time. Now with your right knee, do a circle in the air. Okay, so you might try different foot positions. You might need to have your foot further forwards. But we're thinking about putting some space into the hip joints before we begin um, some stronger poses. Okay, and then you all know I really like this one. So come back to a central point. Leave your left hand, maybe fingers turned out to the side and take the right arm up. If it's too strong, put it on the back of your body, maybe onto your sacrum instead. Okay, you can look up towards your thumb and those that want to can leave their knee on the floor and those that would rather lift their knee off of the floor can press back through the left heel. So you're really opening up into the, into the hips and you're turning so you've got this nice stretch here in the glutes. Good, take a breath. As you breathe out, let's take the right hand back down. If your knee is off the floor, leave it there. If it's not, lift it off and step back into a plank. Now I've got my um, feet. I want your feet together here for your plank position. Keep your shoulders over your wrists. If you want to, you can be on your forearms to make this easier. You're going to turn to your toes to one side. Notice I've got my heels stacked. So I'm just turning, so I'm stretching my waist. Come back to the center and turn. So the toes point the other way, the feet are stacked, okay? 
So turning at the waist, let's do one more on each side. So turn and back to center and then turn the other way. Good, and then come back. Good, let's pop the knees onto the floor. Untuck your toes, turn your palms upwards towards the ceiling and let your head bow, hang down towards the ground. So you can already feel we're building up a little bit of heat. Your body is starting to move, starting to work. Okay, now let's think about focusing on the breath a little bit more. So we're going to repeat that same sequence on the other side. So you know what to expect. Let's see whether you can stay conscious of your breath. And if you've got a good ujjayi, uh, ujjayi, ujjayi breath, where you are maybe contracting the back of your throat, somebody said to me the other day, it, it feels like they're breathing in and out through their ears. And I loved that. Okay, I've never heard that one before. So if you're thinking about what is ujjayi breath, imagine that you're breathing in and out through your ears. See whether that creates the sound. It should sound a bit like you've got a shell. The breath should sound like there's a shell up to your ear and you're listening to the sound of the ocean. Okay, when you're ready, let's inhale with that lovely Ujjayi breath and float up to an all fours position. Tuck under your toes when you're ready and take your bottom backwards and up as you unravel the backs of the legs. We're coming into just a nice easy down dog. Okay. For those that don't want to, to work their wrists again, you don't have to do this next. You could just lift the foot in the air if you want. But for the rest of us, we're going to inhale and lift the left foot. Take it up as high as you can. Three of these. As you exhale, knee to left elbow. Curl around the back body. Engage the tummy muscles. Inhale, take the foot back and up towards the ceiling. As you exhale, float the knee forwards, round the back body, draw navel in, breathe in, foot lifts, exhale, last one, breathe out, good. And then place the left foot to the outside of the left hand. Give it a helping hand if it needs it and drop your uh, right knee to the floor. Anti-clockwise circles with the left knee, please. Feel free to roll the toes off of the floor to turn the left toes out to the sides. It's all fine. Take another couple of breaths, another couple of circles. Good. And then I'm leaving my right palm on the floor. I'm going to take my, uh, sorry, left knee is above the ankle. Left hand comes up to the ceiling and I'm turning my body, turning the rib cage. Maybe sending the right heel back, but not feeling too rigid here. So if you need to play around with position, maybe work a little area of your body a little bit more deeply so you feel this in, in different zones, then please do, please go for it. Okay, very nice. <clears throat> Take another breath. Good job. And let's lower the hand back down to the floor. Bring the hands underneath the shoulders, index fingers pointing forwards. And step back to that plank position that you were in. So same thing. Let's turn the toes to one side. Feel feet stacked if you can. And come back to centre. Stay with your gaze facing down because you really get into your waist then. And then turn the feet the other way. And come back to centre. One more each side, so let's just spin, lift the hips to the sky, and come back to centre, and last one, good, lovely stuff, and back to centre. All right, look at your hands, walk your feet forwards, come into a forward fold, let's lift up off of the palms, have the fingertips on the floor or on a brick if you need them. Bend the knees as much as you need to, to allow your uh, fold to be a comfortable one, your back to be happy. Drop your chin towards your chest and just allow the spine to get some space. Have that lovely, nice kind of feel of traction, just separating and putting as much, much space as you can find. Okay. Maybe have your hands on the floor if you need to. And I want you to really lift your sit bones now. 
So really opening up into the back line of the legs. If this is too strong, keep the knees bent, keep the tummy close towards the thighs, it's all fine. Okay, now let's bend the knees and let's take the feet together again. So big toes together, outside edges of the feet parallel. Sweep the arms behind you and as you do this, drop your bottom as low down as it will go. So I, I like to think of this as like you're a skier jumping, you have to jump um, like Eddie the Eagle, okay? This is what I want you to imagine, I mean you are going to fly. <laughs> as you breathe in, we're going to keep the legs in this position, but sweep the arms up and lift the chest, Utkatasana. As you breathe out, folding back to that halfway position and the arms really reach out to the back end of the mat. Breathe in and come back up, Utkatasana, lightning bolt pose. Nice, exhale, folding down. Good, one more of these coming up. Breathing in, really squeeze the inner thighs towards one another, keep the sit bones low, very good. Now reach forwards, keep the arms forwards but float the heart back down to the height of your hips. That's nice, so we're in our half foot katasan. Good, so some of this you'll recognise because we did a little bit of this on Thursday, some of you. Very nice. Okay, so now let's drop the fingertips to the floor. Let the chin fall towards the chest and lift the sit bones. So we're putting the length back into the thighs, giving the front of the legs maybe a bit of a break. Okay, and then you can have your hands wherever you want. You could use bricks, but I'd like you to take your feet to the um, outsides of your hands so we can come into a squat position. So I've got my toes pointing out. Sometimes it takes a bit of a while to ease into this. So you go into a squat wherever or however is good for you. If you want to put something underneath your heels, you know, that might make your squat much more comfortable and more accessible for you. So if you've got that available, you could roll up your mat. Now come into your squat, keep your bottom down, your body weight into your heels and lift your heart. So the back of the body, I know some of you love this and some of you loathe this. Some of you find this easy, some of you find this a big challenge. So do, do what work with what you've got and <laughs> breathe. Very nice. Okay, so then let's bring the fingertips to the floor. Let's inhale and lift the sit bones, walk the feet closer in and then roll yourself slowly up stand. Good, and roll the shoulders back a few times. Okay, so for the next part of our practice, we're going to, um, let's come and stand actually, stand in the middle of your mat. We're going to be standing for, for, for the majority of the rest of the practice. Okay, so if you need to adjust your camera or your <laughs> Boat your uh, view. Okay, so let's start by taking the feet a little bit wider apart. Haven't got them to my full stretch, okay? Haven't got them, maybe they're maybe just about a meter apart, but turn the toes out, hands onto the hips, start to bend the knees to come into a goddess squat. Now, I don't mind how low you come down, obviously, the lower the harder you're working. Aim to have the knees pointing to the baby toe side of each foot. And maybe just rest your hands on your knees, or yeah, you can have your hands at your heart, sorry everyone. We're going to breathe in and lift the heels. Breathe out to lower them down. Breathe in to lift them. Breathe out to lower. So see if you can keep your, your squat position consistent. Inhale, lift the heels. Exhale, lower. Draw the navel in, point the tailbone down. Last one, breathe in. And breathe out, good. Now slowly straighten the legs, just to give them a little bit of a break. Put the hands onto the hips. Now this way, for me, is gonna be the top of my mat as it normally is. So you start to move wherever the top of your mat is. 
So I'd like you first of all to turn your toes towards the top of the mat and you're going to spin on the heel. So the other foot turns in, but the heel stays off of the ground. And we're doing this in a sweeping gesture. So notice my hands have come behind my back, they can be on the hips. But I want you to sweep the hands up for a balancing warrior. So notice my back here is off the floor. That's what makes it the balancing aspect. So coming up, breathing in and pressing the heel backwards behind. Then as you breathe out, bring the hands back down to the hips, spin the body back to the center, come into that goddess squat, low as you can. Then inhale, back up, turn the toes out to point to the other end of the mat, spin up the back heel and breathe in, lifting the arms, pressing back through the heel. If you need to widen your stance, go for it. Coming back to the center, spinning to face the center and lowering down. Good. Let's bring the hands to the heart. Breathe in. As you breathe out, stand up straight, bring the hands behind. Breathe in, hands to heart, come down. Breathe out, come back in. And down. And in. Lovely. Last one, coming down. And then five little pulses. Let's go. One, two, three, four. Five. and up to stand nice hands to hips turn the toes out turn the back toes in let's come into that balancing warrior so adjust your foot position this is the aim of the slow flow is that we've got the time to make all of these adjustments as we need to breathe in bring the hands up very nice now take the, um, the whatever is your front leg take the opposite arm forwards and the other arm back and see if you can turn to look out behind you. Inhale, come back up to the center, balancing warrior. Exhale to warrior two. So familiar, I want you to drop your back heel, look down your front fingers. All right, so we'll do that again. Inhale to balancing warrior. So the heel spins up, reach up. And then opposite hand to the top of the mat and you're spinning, maybe looking out behind you. Inhale, coming up to the center. Well done. Exhale, warrior two. Look down your fingertips just like you would do. Nice, very good. Back to balancing warrior. This will be the last one for the moment. And then you can exhale, bow the hands down to the floor and step back to your plank. Now you could take a rest in child's pose if you want to, or you can come on a vinyasa with me. We'll do the first one simply, <clears throat> knees down, chin and chest down, swooping through and legs straightening to come into cobra pose. Come down, inhale up to all fours, and exhale into downward dog. So if you took a rest, come and come and come back into down dog now. Very good. So some of you will maybe look at me and think, what the, what is she making me do? So you can do this or you can opt out or you can make it easier by doing one leg at a time. So we're gonna look towards the hands. You know, lift the heels a bit further away from the floor, draw the navel in, bend the knees. And I'd like you to jump your feet to the outside of your hands. Nice. <laughs> or you're hanging in down dog. Okay. When you're ready, lift your heels again, everybody. Press into your hands, draw your navel, and then jump your feet back to your down dog position. Very nice. <laughs> She's like, what the hell are they making me do? Okay. Now think about what was your front foot just a minute ago. That foot needs to step back up to your mat. So sweep it up to the ceiling and step it forwards to the top of your mat. Inhale to balancing warrior again. Coming all the way up. Exhale, hands to hips. Turn the body out to the face, the side of your mat and come into your goddess squat again. Ah, back here. Arms out in front. 
elbows bent. Take one arm on top of the other, doesn't matter which one, because we're gonna do the other side in a minute. So you've got your eagle arms, come down a bit lower, inhale, lift the elbows. Exhale, straighten the legs, lower the elbows. Inhale to squat, elbows lift higher. Good, exhale down. So elbows down, legs straighten. Coming one more time, goddess squat and elbows lift. And back down. Nice. Releasing the hands to the hips. And we'll go the other way. So turn the toes. Spin up the back heel. Find your balance in warrior position. So this will feel nice and familiar. Remember, it's the opposite hand that goes to the top of the mat. The other hand that spins behind. Look at your thumb if you can. Inhale back to centre. Balancing warrior. Exhale to warrior two, so the back heel spins down, look down the right fingertips. Good, we'll repeat that. Inhale, spin up the back heel, balancing warrior position. Exhale, spinning the other way round. Inhale, back to centre. Exhale, warrior two. Good, inhale, balancing warrior lovely and then hands to hips bring the your feet back down spinning the toes out adjusting the feet if you need to goddess squat Ooh. let's inhale straighten the legs and just do a little bit if you need to a little bit of a boogie with the hips have a little bit of a move around if you need to okay arms for the other side arms out in front Elbows bent, make sure it's the other arm on the top. Take the hands up to the, uh, take, point the fingers up to the ceiling if you can. Or remember, you can hold the opposite shoulder. So, as we breathe in, let's come into our goddess squat and lift the elbows up higher and come back down as we stand up straight. Inhale, exhale. One more time. Inhale. And exhale. Good. Release. Okay, so we're going to come for argument's sake back to the top of our mat. So spin the toes so you can come into the balancing warrior feet. Bring the hands down to the floor and step back to a high plank. Opportunity to take a rest in child's pose or come with me on a vinyasa if you want to. So knees, chin, chest is an option, then cobra, or you can chaturanga. Upward dog, so remember firm legs, chest lift, strong arms, and then downward dog if you can. All right, pause here, breathe. Okay, so if you liked the jumping and you want to repeat that, you may jump your feet to the outside edges of your hands, or you could carry on resting. Or you could come on to five bunny hops with me, okay? So draw the navel towards the spine, press the arms nice and long, and then we're going to bring the heels to the bottom. So you're going to bend the knees, lift the heels high, and as you spring up, bring the heels to the bottom. So come up, heels to bottom, and again, two more times. One more. Good job. And then everybody, pop your knees onto the ground, untuck your toes, turn your palms up towards the ceiling, bow your head down, and rest. Okay, let's slide, uh, sorry, turn the palms down to the ground. Take an inhale to float yourself up to all fours. Tuck your toes under, take a downward dog, nice and slowly. Whatever was your front foot, again, step it towards the top of your mat. 
Good, make sure your back foot is far enough behind you. Now you could leave your hands, I've got my fingertips on the floor, they could stay there. Or you could come up and rest your hands on your thigh. Or if you'd like to, you can take your hands above your head. Breathe in. As you breathe out, drop your knee almost to the floor. Inhale to come back up. Remember, hands could be on the hips here if you prefer, you're coming down. You know, do this one more time after this one to make up a total of three. Good, and come back up, well done. Spin the back heel to the floor, it probably wants to go. Straighten the front leg and tilt your hips towards the top of your mat, bringing the hand maybe onto the shin or a block and the other hand coming up to the ceiling, reaching up. Breathe here, look towards your thumb. Nice. Breathe in. As you breathe out, turn towards the ground, bend to the front knee, bring the fingertips down, spin up the back heel as you go. Find that nice long lunge, this is going to be really familiar now. Lift the hands to the fingertips. Reach the fingertips forwards, become light in the back toes, and when you can, step the foot forwards and lower the bottom down, coming back into that half Utkatasan. Take an inhale, think about just lifting the heart, let the hands go wherever they need to, could be in front of the chest. As you exhale, fall down, so the hands come behind you for that ski jump position. Breathe in, come all the way up. Breathe out, gently fold down. One more time, breathe in, coming up. And then come up to stand, which will feel so welcome. Good job, and bring the hands down to your heart. Nice, shake it out of your legs. Good job, everyone. Hands to your hips. Stepping back so you can come into your goddess position. Turning the toes out. Hands come behind your back. Link the fingers or just rest them onto the back. You can puff the chest up, roll the shoulders back if you wish. Breathe in and as you breathe out, coming down low. Good, coming back up again. Two more, breathe out, come down. And up. Keep the weight into the heels, keep the inner arches of your feet lifted. Lovely. And gently release. Good job. Release the hands. We're going to turn towards the other end of the mat now. So spin the toes, lift the heel. Option to leave hands here or for a stronger practice, arms above the head. Breathe in. Three of these. Exhale, knee almost to the floor. Inhale, back up to balancing warrior. Exhale, down. Inhale, high. Exhale, down. Good job. Coming back up, releasing the hands, spinning the back heel to the floor and straightening the front leg. Make sure the back toes are turned in slightly. Tilting the hips. Releasing the hand down onto the leg and taking the other arm up, looking up for triangle pose. Deep breathing. Two more breaths here. Press down into the outside edge of the back foot and keep the arches of the feet high. Good, let's look down. Let's bend the front knee. And take the hands almost to the, sorry, fingertips to the floor so you can spin up the back heel. Very good. So you can rest your body weight onto your front leg. You can take your fingertips forwards. Come as light as you can on the back toes. And then when you're ready, step the back foot up and stay low down in your half Utkatasan. Reach the hands behind you. And then we'll go for a longer sweep. So breathe in, come up to stand. Use that momentum from the arms. Breathe out, forward and down for your ski jump position. Breathe in, Utkatasana. 
breathe out to come down. One more time, breathe in, Utkatasan, and then stand up straight, that would be so welcome, reach up, and then hands come to your heart. Pause here, close your eyes, and breathe. Allow for the steadiness of your breaths to control the, the beat of your heart. Nice. Okay, let's release the hands down to the hips. Leave what would be your back foot where it is and sidestep to your goddess position so maybe take the feet a little bit wider then spin the heels out so that the toes become a little bit pigeon a little bit turning in hands to the hips to breathe in as you breathe out tilt at the pelvis so that you can come to halfway don't come lower than that Bring the arms out in front of you, reach them straight forwards. Take the sit bones back, legs nice and strong. Good. Pressing back through the heels, engaging the tummy muscles. Take another breath here, you've got this. And as you exhale next, release the fingertips to the floor. Walk the hands forwards for a wide legged downward dog position. So once you find a nice position for the hands, if you've got the space to do this, um, and then you can take the sit bones back and let your head hang a little bit more deeply in between your arms. Take a couple of breaths here. Okay. Then let's walk the hands back underneath the face. Um, let's stay in this halfway down position. And if you need a brick underneath your hands, go for it. You can leave one hand under your face. As you breathe in, take the other arm up to the ceiling, look at your thumb. As you breathe out, lower the hand down. Go the other way, breathe in and breathe out let's do one more on each side if you want if you'd rather pause you can do just go with the flow of your breath breathing in last one nice and breathe out very good okay so let's come back so the hands are underneath the face bend the knees a little bit put the hands onto the hips as you inhale, lift your heart. Good job, back up to stand, very nice. Okay, so maybe heel toe the feet just a tiny bit closer together so you feel super comfy. And you might want a brick for this one. We're gonna to turn to face the top of the mat. We're gonna come into reverse triangle pose. So I'd like you to spin what, was your, what was, uh, is your front foot so that the toes point to the top of the mat. And then what your back leg is, I want you to step it a bit closer still, but also to the long edge of your mat. So I've got one foot towards one side of the mat, one foot towards the other. And then you need to turn so that you are fully facing the top of your mat, so not out to the side or anything like that. It's a forward fold to begin with, and if you need to bend the front knee, you can do. It is a straight leg position eventually, so you can work towards that either in the pose today or over the over time. Okay, so bend the knee to begin with, breathe in, and as you breathe out, fold to about halfway down. Okay, so you want your heart the same height as your hips. So here you can gauge whether your front leg can straighten, but the key is the back heel. So the back heel must stay on the ground. So make sure that that's happening, please. And then you can release the opposite hand to the floor. So whether you need a brick on its end, that's fine, or on its side, doesn't matter what setting. And your other hand will be coming onto your back body. 
and you're going to turn out to the side. So whatever is your front leg, you should be turning so that you can feel the uh, glutes and thigh stretch going on in the front leg. So don't lose the back leg, even though the back leg feels like it's got less to do. Keep pressing the back heel into the floor so you stay anchored. And if you want then, the hand that's on the back of your body can then lift up towards the ceiling, that's great. And it faces the direction you're facing. Okay, so if you've spun your body to face the right, your uh, right hand will be in the air and you can eventually look up towards your right thumb. Or the other way around if you've gone the other way. <laughs> Good job. So take another big breath in here, right up into the fingertips. And as you breathe out, gently fold back down towards the ground. Bend the front knee and slowly lift yourself up to stand and step forwards with the back foot. Okay, so just for a moment, stand in mountain pose as you let your body settle. And then it's the other leg which is going to stay at the top of the mat. So put the hands on the hips, make sure the foot is fairly wide. As, you, as your hips become more open, you can always bring the narrow the stance of the, of the pose. Step the other foot back, remembering that the heel must stay clearly on the ground and the front, uh, the hips need to stay facing forwards. Sit, bend your front knee just a little bit to soften the hamstring and then gently fold to about halfway. Letting your hands come towards your brick if you're using it or, or to the floor. You can rest it on the leg as well if you wish to. Remember it's the opposite, whatever foot is in front is the opposite hand on the block and you're turning towards the direction of the straight leg side and eventually maybe taking the hand up towards the ceiling or keeping it resting here because this area of the body needs to stay fairly flat and stable. The main rotation is happening in the thoracic area of your spine. So look up towards your thumb and breathe. If it's too strong, just have the gaze out to the side. Very nice. And then you can breathe in. And as you breathe out, lower the hand down. Soften the front leg, stand up and step forwards. Yeah, well done. Okay, so we're going to take a little bit of a side body stretch now as we begin to, to kind of unwind and cool ourselves down. So to start with, put your hands on your hips. If you're near a wall, this is helpful, as would be a chair or something like that. It's not necessary though, it's only if you feel wobbly. So I'm going to stand on my left leg and my right leg, I'm going to take it behind my, body, my uh, left leg and I'm going to take it across so it's towards, if I turn this way, you can see I'm going to take it out behind me like this and I'm going to bend my left knee so that I can get the outside edge of my right foot onto the floor. So this might feel a bit weird, okay? A bit like, ooh, a bit wobbly. And the outside edge of your foot is not used to you balancing your body weight on. We did a tiny bit of it the other week, if you remember. Take your hands above your head. Now I am stretching my right side. I've got my right leg behind me. So I'm gonna hold on to my right wrist with my left hand and pull my arm across to the left. So keep bending your front leg, your uh, up to me, it's my left leg, and gently opening up along the right hand side of the body. So obviously the further across you take your right leg, the stronger, or your foot, the stronger this stretch becomes. Good, you mastered it, super. Okay, come back to centre as you inhale. Nice. And step your feet back to normal. Good. So, bit of a tip, if, you weren't, if you've got a wooden floor, don't rest the side of your foot on the floor because it's too, too bony, isn't it? It's too painful. So we're going to go the other way. 
So this time I'm going to bend my right knee, take my left foot behind my heel and out to the side. And this is, it's weird, okay? It's a bit of a weird one, but it feels really nice to do it. And maybe, maybe take the foot further back if you, if you feel that that's um, achievable for you. Hands coming above the head does help with the balance, I think. You can hold on to the opposite wrist and you're leaning towards that, the outside edge of your foot, essentially. Don't let all of your body weight fall into it. Keep yourself kind of lifting away from the floor. Don't worry if you feel a little bit wobbly here. Breathe. Breathe into the side of your waist. Good. And then gently release and step forward. Good. Shake it on out of your feet. Very well done. Okay, so bring the feet nice and wide apart. Turn the toes out slightly. Come down into your little squat position. Elbows maybe to the side, insides of the knees. So I'm hoping that the more frequently we do this, the, the, the easier this is going to become for us all. So I'm going to turn around so that you can see me. I'm going to bring one hand to the floor and take the other arm up towards the ceiling and I'm pressing my knee and my elbow towards each other. And then exhale, come down, place those fingers onto the floor, knee and elbow press as I turn and get some space in the waist and come back down. Very nice. Slowly release and bring the knees onto the floor. Big toes together, drop the bottom towards the heels. Maybe bring the hands round by the ankles and let the head fall forwards, the shoulders round gently. And just take a couple of breaths here. Well done. So when you're ready, slowly lift yourself back up to sit, maybe kneeling, maybe cross-legged. And as we begin to cool the body down, as we begin to slow the body down, we'll take some left nostril breathing. Exactly the same as we did at the start. So be comfortable, it will be 10 breaths that we'll take. You'll count your own breaths. And as soon as you're done, no, actually, hold that thought. So just take your finger or your thumb up towards the outer right nostril and gently close it. You don't have to press very hard here at all. You certainly, I don't do it right on the very edge of my nostril, I just do it a bit further up the um, side of the nose, okay? So breathing in and out through the left nostril for 10 breaths now, please. When you finish, releasing your hand to your lap. And just sitting peacefully for a few breaths. Good. Okay. So as we make our way down to lie, we're not quite finished yet. We're going to do a couple of stretches. You might want something to put underneath your head. So if you've got a blanket or a block, you want to use that. 
please grab it and come down to lie, please, with your knees bent. All right, so we're going to finish the class lying down. So, so it absolutely, if you need a, an extra layer or a, a jumper or something like that for the practice to finish, then please make sure that's the hand. And then we're going to bring the right knee in towards the chest and slide the left leg away from you. Just take a breath or two, just hugging your knee gently in towards you. And then bringing the right arm to the inside of the right thigh and reaching for the outside of the right foot for happy baby. If you can keep the left leg straight, go for it. But if you need to have the knee bent, please do. Now the block underneath the head makes this a much more accessible position. So if you find you don't need it, please slide it away. What I want you to do is gently draw the knee in the direction of the floor. And even if that means that you roll more onto the right hand side of your body, please go for it. Okay, so notice that I've, I, have, I have bent my knee. I could have my leg straight if I wanted to, but I'm more worried about what the right leg is doing. I'm trying to get my right thigh towards the floor. You know, hold this here into a bit of a stretch for a breath or two longer. And then I'd like you to come back to centre and you could bend your left knee. You're going to take your right foot across your body. And if you can, you're going to put your left elbow, put, sorry, put your foot into the left elbow crease right elbow is going to wrap around the, the side of the shin and I've linked my fingers so I'm hugging the leg. Now if this is not attained and not achievable then just hold the foot, keep the foot at a right angle and hold the knee and then just draw the leg close in towards the chest. You want that stretch in your glutes and this is a reclining pigeon pose so it's just a slightly different, maybe a little bit easier on the knee variation of pigeon that we were working with the other day. So you're sliding the left foot away. Notice how my head has come quite far off of the floor. I can push it down if I really try, but it, it does create a little bit of stretch. My shoulders aren't open enough for that to happen. So breathe in, breathing out. Good job. And then releasing the foot holding the knee with the left hand, right arm out to the side, left leg straight, and then rolling the knee across to the left, and just spending a couple of minutes in a little twist. Okay, and then let's come back to the centre. Slide the right leg away from you. And just for a moment, be still with both legs out straight and enjoy. <sighs> Maybe release the breath through the mouth. You might want to do some of those blubbery lip sounds. <laughs> always a good one. All right. So let's take the left knee in. Give it a little gentle squeeze in towards the thigh and do straight, do keep the right leg straight because that will help with the little openness there and just put a bit of a stretch in the right hip as well too. Then if you can, you're going to take your knee to the out wider to the side and you're going to reach for your foot. So if you need to bend your right knee here, that's fine. 
sole of the foot faces the ceiling, half happy baby pose. And you are rolling onto your left side, please, to aim to bring the left thigh towards the ground. If it touches, brilliant. If it doesn't, please don't force it down. If you want to work your right leg away, then go for it. Again, do all of these things to your own measure. Some things will feel delicious to some people and for others, they'll be absolute horror. So, so please just make your own best judgment and, and don't worry because the, the problem that people convey to me about um, this online business is that they can't see anybody else. And I spend a lot of my time in class saying, don't worry about what anybody else is doing. Don't just worry about what you're doing. But the thing is, in a class, when you have a look around, you can you your you might be in your own home thinking, oh, I bet I'm the only one that's not able to do this or is not doing it properly. And in a class, you get to look around and go, oh look, everyone's the same as me, really. <laughs> so that's what we miss, isn't it? That's the thing we're missing the most. Okay, come back to center. Maybe take the foot across for a half for a reclining pigeon. You could hold the foot with the right hand and the knee with the left hand. Or if you want to go for a slightly tighter stretch, you could bring the elbow, um, the foot into the elbow and hug the knee in a little bit more closely. But don't force this here, just work at your own pace. Take a couple of breaths. And then release. Hold on to the knee with the right hand now. Take the left arm somewhere out to the side and roll the knee across the body. Come into a little lying twist. And then you can inhale your way back to centre and slide your left foot down to the end of your mat. Making any adjustments that you need, making sure you're going to be comfortable and settled. Release the hands to the floor by your sides, turn your palms to face the ceiling. Let your fingers curl softly. Allow the legs to feel long, so maybe walk the heels just that extra millimetre away from you. And then it's the, the feeling that you're looking for is as though somebody has just splatted you onto the floor. And I, I love that. I love that feeling where you just, and it, you get to it gradually. It's not an instant thing. It's not something we get as soon as we lie down often. But over time, and over breaths, can you give yourself permission to release so that your body starts to spread? And you feel the innate softness that is there encasing all of the solidity, all of the strength that you've had. Strong legs, strong open hips. Now can you invite the opposite in? Can you let your body become so soft? so comfortable that there's nothing else to do other than to become completely relaxed.
feel the skin smoothing across the forehead and allow the jaw to release. Let the back of the head become really heavy. All right, so let's bring our attention back into our body. We invite some deeper breaths in and out before we prepare for some movement. Begin to move fingers and toes. Turn your head from side to side gently. Take a stretch out any way that feels good. Now then you can bend your knees, roll yourself over to one side and come round and up. And we'll come and sit. So sitting comfortably, let's end our practice together. So let's take the fingertips to the floor. Take a big breath in and bring the hands up high above your head. And as you exhale, bring the hands down to rest in front of your heart. Relax your shoulders, let's soften the eyes. Release the jaw and breathe in and out. And then when you're ready, taking a breath in and opening your eyes. Well done. Namaste to you. Super stuff, everyone. Well done. I hope you have a very lovely rest of the day.